The latest ground zero in the war on women's rights is an unlikely place. It's the trial against Philadelphia abortion Dr. Kermit Gosnell. Closing arguments were heard today. In a word, the case is horrific. Gosnell is charged with killing four babies, allegedly born alive, and in the overdose death of a 41-year-old patient. The grand jury report says Gosnell illegally delivered live, viable babies in the third trimester of pregnancy and then murdered these newborns. Let me be very clear. What this man allegedly did was beyond reprehensible if guilty. If guilty, this monster deserves the justice coming to him. But the right is now exploiting this horrible case to attack women's rights. I think that what you're going to see with the Gosnell case is people will focus on, yes, the regulations, but also ending federal funding of abortion. And that will come uh, back into play. Ending federal funding for abortion? This is not the answer. With, with no legal right to an abortion, poor women are left to the Gosnells of the world. These are the kinds of butchers who, get, who you get when the right to choose is taken away. This is the ugly and dirty politics of the right playing, and we can't let it happen. We can't let them play this to its logical conclusion and use distortions to do that. Joining me now is Elise Hogue, uh, the uh, president of NARAL Pro-Choice America, and Unrin Camon from Salon.com. Uh, Elise, what's your response to the right wingers using Gosnell to advance their agenda? I think it's egregious. I mean, look, what this guy was doing, as you say, if the allegations are proven true, was illegal in all 50 states and by federal law. It's outrageous. I'm angered. I go to work every single morning to prevent women from falling into the clutches of Kermit Gosnell. But that woman you played talking about ending federal funding, the anti-choice extremists have made sure for decades that women can't actually use federal funding like they would for any other medical procedure. Pennsylvania got an F in our Who Decides report simply because they don't make funding available for this kind of medical procedure that keeps women safe and keeps this medical procedure legal. The anti-choice extremists are the ones that keep the Gosnells in business, and we'll just see more of it if they get their way. Erin, you know, what bothers me about this is that we're talking here enforcement not regulation. They're trying to make it regulation, not enforcement. Now, I have no idea whether Gosnell is guilty or not, but I do know that in poor communities, before you had federal funding and the right to choose, that you had nothing but butchers available to poor people. And to try and use this case to return to that would increase the level of danger, not decrease it. Look, the tragedy is that across the board, whether we're talking about abortion care or maternal mortality, there are unforgivable racial disparities in terms of the level of care that women get. No doubt. And if Gosnell, in fact, is guilty of what he's charged of, this is an example of that. He's no more representative of abortion care than the doctor, the dentist that gave a bunch of his patients HIV because he didn't sterilize his equipment is. Unfortunately, there will always be doctors that commit crimes or that don't uh, live up to the standard of care. The question is not, I mean, Marsha Blackburn, what does she want to do? She wants to defund Planned Parenthood. She wants to stop federal funding. By the way, we don't really have federal funding for abortion in most cases. She wants to stop federal funding from going to birth control, to mm -hmm. STD testing, to counseling. They want to stop all the things that we have in place right now that are preventing unwanted pregnancies and allowing women to make decisions about their lives. So this is a real bait and switch. Last year, we were talking about Todd Aiken. We were talking about birth control and Planned Parenthood. Right. What the right is trying to do now is change the subject away from the fact that they want to deny women the right to have choice over their destinies. No doubt about it. They, they are changing the premise to fit their conclusion rather than getting a conclusion from the right premise. This is about enforcement. Let, let, let me uh, a ask you this, Elise. When you look at the fact that they're also complaining on the right about the coverage, uh, let me go to uh, right wing radio talk show host Lars Larson who has a theory on why he claims the media isn't covering the trial 
Uh, listen to this. We're going to pretend that doesn't exist because we can't possibly tell the story without violating all of our beliefs that abortion is a right and that any way it gets done to any baby at any number of weeks is completely appropriate for any reason whatsoever. I mean, first of all, uh, that, do you believe there's been a blackout in the media and, and, and the surrounding coverage of this media is in some way to protect women's right to choose? I mean, I still understand how this is a right to choose issue. Well, listen, Reverend, Erin wrote the best piece on the fact that there had been no media blackout, but I'll tell you, as a new president of a pro-choice organization, I want more media scrutiny on this case because that's the only way we're going to turn these anti-choice extremist crocodile tears into policies that actually protect women by not throwing up obstacles for them getting safe and legal abortion care. You have to remember, the same voices that are talking about trying to make this a mandate on abortion care are the same voices that would keep these same poor women from accessing contraception. They simply don't believe yep. that women should have choices over their own future. And let me say this, the vast majority, 92% of abortions are done before 14 weeks. Just over 1% are beyond 20 weeks, just over 1%. Uh, Arkansas just banned abortion at 12 weeks, North Dakota at six weeks. This Gosnell case is horrifying, but it's not where the real fight on the right to choose is at, really. Right, and, and the tragedy is that later abortions take place often because women can't access the care that they need early. Who is passing these restrictions that make it harder for women to access abortion in a safe way? Republicans in many states, they're the ones that are shutting down clinics. They're the ones that are creating these onerous and unsafe uh, restrictions on women's right to choose, which actually ends up meaning that they seek abortions later and they dri they're driven into the hands of people like Gosnell. All right, uh, Elise Hogg and Erin uh, uh, Carmone, thank you both for your time this evening. Thank you, Reverend. Thank you, Reverend.